Welcome to Eclectic Images and Crafting with Kathy. Today we're going over basic embossing. So we're covering the materials you need to use, the products, and also some tips and techniques to get the best out of those products. So what we're going to be making is four, showing four different techniques, um, outline stamping, and the using of both clear and white embossing powders and the effects that you can get with those. We're going to be working with the Ranger embossing powders. Now the four colors I consider to be essentials in a basic kit is black, gold, white, and clear. We're also going to be covering um, what inks to use. Now I choose to work with Versamark. There are several different embossing inks on the market, but I like the Versamark. It's a slow drying ink, so the embossing powder has time to stick to it, but it also is a very fine ink that picks up on all the detail of your stamped image. There are other uses for Versamark ink pad that we'll cover in another video, but at this stage we're just going to be using it for embossing. Now if you're doing a lot of embossing, your pad can dry out a little bit, which means that you don't get as good a result. But there is a reinker available, and so you could just reink your pad, and that way you'll get many, many years of use out of your Versamark pad. Now the other ink pad we're using today is the Collider Color Calypso. So this is what we're going to be using for doing our colouring, as well as doing some stamping with it. Okay, let's get started. So one of the things we do before we start, I'm working on the Cotton Blend cardstock again because I'm going to be adding some water to this one. And the first thing to do is to use something to anti-static your page. I'm using Embossing Buddy, which is just a, a little powder puff filled with powder that has this anti-static effect. And then our card's ready to go. So I'm going to be working with stamps from the Ultra New Sweetest Pea stamp set. This makes a lovely outline flower for colouring in. So now we ink that up thoroughly with our embossing ink. Mostly when you're stamping, get into the habit of taking your ink pad to the stamp. This gives you a lot more control over how much ink you're putting onto the stamp. Okay, now press that down onto your page. Before we do that, I'm just going to make sure that I've got some a scrap bit of paper for catching embossing powder standing by ready and that I've got my embossing powder open ready to go as well. So now with our ink stamp we lay that onto our card, press down nice and evenly, always make sure you press along the whole length of your stamp and the width of it without wiggling the block from side to side and also don't let go of the block completely because you may knock it and smudge things as you come back. So always have one hand hanging onto it as you press down with the other hand. Lift straight up, now it may stick, that's fine. And then we come over here and we tip a generous amount of embossing powder onto our card. Turn it around so I can get the other side of it. We always find it's interesting if we use gold embossing powder when we're first showing someone what stamping's all about. Um, this is where we get people hooked on stamping because gold embossing powder is just so pretty. Uh, it's one of those things where when you've been stamping for a while, often you um, go away from using embossing colours and then you come back to gold and you just go, oh yeah, this is really nice. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm using a fine brush just to brush off if there is any extra grains of embossing powder where we don't want them. Now you'll notice also that as I um, was knocking the powder off, I tapped the side of the card, then flipped the card over and gave it a good tap on the back. This again gets rid of excess powder from the card that you don't want. We're then ready to pop our excess embossing powder back into our little jar. Such a scientific tool, but I actually really like it. I find it works really well. Okay, then we get out our heat gun. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, most of us start off doing our embossing over the toaster um, or, <laughs> or an electric element or something like that. But then you get pretty sick of that and move on to having some sort of a heat tool. This is going to make a little bit of a noise, but I'll try and talk over the top so it doesn't uh, blitz us out too much. Okay, now just going to get the heat gun warmed up a little bit. If you're a bit nervous with your embossing, particularly if you're using a black powder, you can start off heating on the back of the card a bit. And this does help to start to heat and soften the powder so it doesn't tend to blow away on you. One thing people often ask me, there it goes. You can see a nice close up there of actually seeing how the embossing powder changes. It's just magic. How brilliant is that? Now I do get a lot of people asking, can they use a hair dryer for embossing? 
And the answer on that one is no, because a hairdryer has too much blow and not enough heat. So it will actually blow the powder off your card before it has chance to melt it. Okay, so that's our basic em embossing with gold. Now the other color that is brilliant for doing outlines for coloring in is of course black. This is one that I've previously done and colored. And you can see how the combination of the Versamark ink being a detail ink and using a detail embossing powder means we pick up all those little fine lines. So it just gives you that beautiful edge to color too. So I'm very quickly gonna add some watercolor to our little flower. Now to do watercoloring with something like an ink pad, it's best to have a bit of an acrylic block or a plate, press your ink pad down onto it, and this gives you a coloring palette. I'm then going to be working with my Alton, uh, my that's the stamp is Alton New. I'm now going to be working with my Pentel um, Aqua Wash brush, and this is a medium sized tip, which has a fine point but holds a reasonable amount of water, which gives me great blending. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit, bit of color off that block. Lay it. Now my, I've already tested my, on my hand that my brush is actually quite damp. So then I can just lay it on the card and smooth our color out. And you can see we can butt right up to those edges. I'm just gonna clean my brush slightly just so I can blend back onto the color a little bit just so I've got my stronger color at the base of the petal. Now you'll notice that I got so enthusiastic about that that I have gone over my edges in a couple of spots. So I'm just gonna, with a clean brush, just brush that back a little bit. Okay, I'm then gonna pick up another color and wash that in as well. So start at the base, drag it up till it's blending in with the yellow. Give my brush a clean and just go over with the two colors of Met. So wash them into each other a bit. And here I was, I was just gonna go over embossing in this, um, in this video, and of course I've started watercoloring and got myself totally distracted on watercoloring again. But who doesn't love a watercolored flower? Pop our red in, clean your brush, just go between your two colors a little bit just to blend them. And just pop a little bit of red in at the base of that petal as well. Okay, so that just shows you the prettiness of your gold embossing with your colouring. As I said, we could colour this with normal marker pens, normal textures, we could colour it with metallic paints, watercolour paints, whatever. But that gold edging gives you that beautiful line to colour too. The one I did in the sample here was done with watercolour paints, so a slightly different colouring technique, but just a beautiful finish. Okay, so that covers your black and your gold. Beautiful for both outlines and other embossing effects. But I also wanted to cover some of the things that you can do with a clear embossing powder, as well as uh, the white embossing powder. So what I'm gonna do next is just use a white embossing powder. Now I'm going to be working with the Ultra New Lacy Scrolls stamp set for this one. Good, so they're a good solid image. And I've preloaded that into my stamping platform ready for us to emboss. So I'll just bring that into shot. So I've already laid the stamps out onto the platform. Matthew's just zooming out to get a shot of that for me. Thank you very much, Matthew. Now I'm just gonna place my Cotton Blend cardstock into the platform. And I've got a lot of stamps here. I can't put my magnets on to hold it down because I've got stamps covering nearly everywhere. A lot of stamps here, so I'm going to have to get quite, make sure I get a lot of coverage with my Versamark ink on them. And as before, I'm going to get my bit of paper laid out ready. Now I've cleaned that off, ready for my white embossing powder, which I'm just looking around for. That's it, get that one ready. Okay, so nice and generous inking with our Versamark ink pad onto our stamps. Make sure I've covered everywhere. Lay it down on the card and a good push down on the whole image. We want really good coverage of ink here. 
and then very quickly peel it up and get that wine embossing powder onto it. And you'll see I'm putting heaps on, but that doesn't matter because we're going to tip all the excess back into the jar. And we're not wasting any of it. Grab my fine brush, give it a tap. Now I'm just being careful where I hang onto the card so that I don't touch any of those areas that have got powder on them. I tap on the side, tip the card over, a couple of good taps on the back. Then just have a little bit of a look and I'm just checking for any excess powder. We don't have a lot there. Rightio. Now I'll pop my platform to one side. I'll clean up that embossing powder. Always a good habit to get into is to put your embossing powder away before you get your heat gun out. I'll clean that off on my leg. <laughs> um, just so it's ready for doing with clear powder next. So pop my powder away and then get ready to do our heating. So lots of lovely heat gun noise again. Now we're going to be going over all of the card, so I've just got to be a little bit careful where I'm hanging onto it that I don't peek my hand as well. And you see that powder starting to melt and raise up. Now you can overheat embossing powder, if you overheat it, it will actually flatten back down and become boring. So just watch for it just to go shiny and start to go smooth, and that's when you move on to your next area. I do find that, particularly with white powder, it is most likely to overheat if you've already been doing some colouring effects with the card. So if you've already been doing some background effects and then you're stamping over that with the white, uh, just be careful because that's when it's most likely to overheat on you. Okay. Now, in the background of this one, I'm just going to grab a quick drink, sorry. For the background of this one, the white embossed areas will now act as a resist. So we can now put all sorts of colours, we could smoosh colour onto that, we can apply colour with brushes, with sponges, and that white powder will resist what we do. So what I'm going to do is just get some of this Calypso ink pad, I'll put the lid there so I know what colour I'm working with, and I'm just going to add some pretty colours around. Let's start off with this lovely bluey aqua colour. I'm going to spritz over it with a bit of water, which will help the colours to blend in together. So I'm not being overly fussed about um, not getting any patches of colour. So I'm just going straight onto the card. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'm working with a large round-ended paintbrush. This gives me good coverage of ink. So we need pinky purple colour. And you can see already how that white is embossing powder is resisting where I'm putting the inks. It starts to show up a lot more. I think I might just stick to these two colours. I use more colours on our sample piece. This one I'm just going to stick to the two colours. And the stronger your ink colours are, the more that actually that white embossing is going to show up. Okay, you get the idea. So we're applying background colour and that makes that white stand out. So I will just give this a little bit of a spritz with water. But before I do that, I'm actually just going to use my lint-free cloth and just buff off where that white is and see how it just brings the colour, the, the whiteness back to it. Okay, now we'll just give a little spritz with water. Which is just going to help blend those colours in together. 
I could tissue a little bit off, but I'm actually thinking I'm just, I'm quite liking how that is at the moment. I like the vibrancy of it. It's contrasting with the more pastel one I did earlier. So I'm just gonna leave that one to one side to dry off as it is, and we'll move on to our next technique. Okay, and next technique, now I'm just gonna give this craft mat a bit of a wipe before I move on so I don't make too much mess. Us paper crafters are notorious for getting inky and messy, but we don't have to actually smudge one card into the next one. Okay, so let's just show you some other techniques we can do. We're still gonna be using our Collider Color ink pad, and this time we're switching to a clear embossing powder. And I'm going to need my Thistle, then, Th Thistle Zen stamp. And we're going to ink that up on the same Collider Colour pad that we've just been using for our background colours. Now with Collider Colours, when you want to use it as a stamp pad, you actually push the colours together. They store with the colours separate so they don't get all um, mushed in together and bleed in together when it's in storage. So push it together. Now don't ever ink a stamp on a multicolour pad going that way or you'll just smudge all those colours in together and lose the beautiful colours. So always you can have your stamp on whatever angle you like but always ink across it. Now I do normally say take your ink pad to your stamp but the Collider colour pads are very firm and you really can tap quite firmly across them. You'll notice that my stamp is actually a little bit larger than the ink pad. So I'm just going to turn the stamp around and just ink that bottom end of it so we know that all of our stamp has been inked. Just check and make sure I've got everywhere. Pull those colours apart again so that we can put the lid on. And then grab my piece of cotton blend cardstock. This works beautifully on, like the cotton blend cardstock is actually a creamy coloured card. This actually works beautifully on white, like your Nina Solar white cardstock as well. It just um, will bring out the colours even stronger. Okay, so we've got that gorgeous multicoloured image. Now I'm just going to give my stamp a quick clean and then we're going to go over the top of that. Now, because, let me explain why I'm doing this. Some, a, an ink pad like Collider Colour is a fairly quick drying dye ink pad. It's not designed as an embossing ink. Your embossing inks are your slower drying pigment inks. So a dye ink, most dye inks will dry too quickly for you to be able to emboss. But you're thinking, but I love those colours and I want to have that beautiful shine of embossing with them. So what you can do, so any dye inks that you've got that you want to be able to emboss over the top of, this is where your clear powder really comes into its own. Now clear powder can also be used if you've got any colours of pigment inks. So you've got some Versamark chalk inks or you've got some Versacolor pigment inks and you want to be able to emboss that colour go over it with a clear powder. So what a clear powder does is give you a lovely raised shiny finish but it picks up on whatever colour is underneath it. Okay, so I'll grab my clear powder and my sheet of paper. So we're going to ink up with Versamark. Have my clear powder open ready. Ink up our stamp that we've just stamped with, with Versamark. lay it over the top of the other image. Now, I want to line it up as exactly as I can, but because we've actually, we're have actually we going with a clear powder, it's actually okay if we're not exact. But let's see how good we can get. So press down nicely over the whole image, lift up. Doesn't look like we've done anything, but the magic is about to happen. So pop your powder on, tap it down, tap the side of the card, Tap the back of the card. Okay, pop your powder back into your jar. Now I won't need to clean the paper off at this stage because I'll be using clear powder next, but I will pop the lid back on my jar. Okay, let's get our heat gun out. And this is gonna look fantastic because those colors will just pizzazz as that embossing powder melts. There it goes. Wow. 
How superb is that? And you can see that beautiful shine now and it's just brought those colours out fantastically. Now if I wanted to finish the card off like I've done with our sample one, I'll just go back to our ink pad and back to my big brush. Pick up some of this lovely tealy colour, tealy blue, and I'm just going to smudge around the edge of my card. I do find these brushes are the easiest way to get a lovely soft smudgy look around your card. Now if you're a little bit nervous starting off with something like this, just go back to doing some circles. And you'll notice that I start at the edge of the card. As I've got less ink on the brush, if I want to bring it into the card a bit more, I can. But leave a nice creamy glow around the flower, around the thistle flower. So my strongest colour is on the edge and then just softly smudge it in. And again, this is where circles can be really good because you can get such a lovely soft smudge. Okay, so that's how we use our Versamark and clear powder to actually emboss over dye inks that don't, wouldn't normally be embossable. And again, as I said, you also would use your clear powder to emboss over other colours of inks. Okay, our last technique, I've already um, coloured the card and I used the same Collider Colour ink pad and my big brushes and I basically just stomped some ink on. So it's really, really messy and that's fine. So what we're going to do here is we'll use the clear powder is going to, like we used the white as a resist before, this time we're going to be using the clear powder as a resist. And as with other things, what we'll show is going to be the colours that are underneath that clear powder. So let's pop our card into the same layout that we did before. So this um, has been created earlier and dried so that there's no way that the inks, that the embossing powder is going to stick to any of these inks. And I'll just give it a wipe over with my anti-static pad just to make sure that our embossing powder just sticks to where we want it. Let's pop our card in our stamping platform. This was where you could use your stamping platform or your MISTI tool. Pop it in. Again, I can't use my magnets because I've got stamps going all over the card. Get our Versamark ink pad. Again, thoroughly ink those stamps. Swing our platform down and lots of pressure. Peel it off and let's pop our embossing powder on. And if we've done well, it's just going to stick to where we just put the stamped images. Again, be careful because we've stamped the whole background area, just be careful how you're holding onto the card that you're not sticking your hands in where you've put the embossing powder. So tap on the side, turn it over, thump on the back. Just going to check to make sure it looks like I've got enough embossing powder on various areas and that's looking good. So we'll close our platform. I'll come back later and clean those stamps. Put our embossing powder back in our jar. I should try and do this in reverse so you can actually see it happening, shouldn't I? That feels really awkward. Okay, <laughs> put us back in the jar and I didn't spill too much at all. Rightio, let's pop the lid back on there, bring our card back into shot and we'll heat that. And again, you'll see the colours stand out once we get the embossing powder there melted. It's coming up lovely and shiny, but you can see it's disappearing into the background quite a bit. That's okay, because what we're going to do is capitalise on the fact that these embossing powder areas 
will resist what extra ink we put on them. So what we're going to do is now darken all the background of the card so that what we see is those beautiful colours that we've pounced onto our card underneath the areas that are now embossed. To do this, I will use a darker ink. Now I might choose to use, um, often you would do it in black, but I'm going to do it in a dark purple today. So I'm using the Catherine Pooler Queen for a day, which is just a really deep purple. And I'm actually going to use a little sponge tool to apply it. So ink up, and it looks weird because we're actually going to just almost, <laughs> looks like we're trying to cover everything that we've just done. Lots of little pouncy sounds. Okay, I'm not going to take the time to do the whole card because we have already, I have already created one that I can show you, but I just wanted to show the technique. So we cover that with the purple and then you would just grab a lint-free cloth and buff off the embossed areas. And how cool is that? So that's a great use for your clear powder in helping make your backgrounds. So you can use your clear powder for um, embossing pictures or you can use it for creating great resist backgrounds. So here's the one I did earlier with the more pastel colours. That's where I put inks on, sprayed a bit of water and took a bit of colour off so they came out more pastel. On this one, I've left the inks quite vivid. So you can get just so many wonderful effects. Then of course you could layer this um, with uh, layer it on a piece of card, layer die cuts over the top of it, and um, create a finished card. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here though, I'm just gonna layer this one up. So I'm just gonna be getting our double-sided tape. And a little trick that I like to use with double-sided tape is using an acrylic block to help um, cut the tape off. And I've been a really good girl and I've written all my instructions on the back of this card to know what colours I've used and now I'm going to stick that to another card. <laughs> Not so clever. Actually, I'll lie. What I'm going to stick down is one of our cards that we've just made that I haven't written all my instructions on the back of. We'll do this one. Okay, so we're just going to put our double-sided tape on nice and close to the edge of the card. Smooth it down, lay our little block in there and tear it off. Pop tape on. Smooth it down, put our little block in, tear it off. Just, I find it's easier than trying to get in with scissors to cut the tape, and even easier actually than using a knife. Alrighty, I. Now to peel the tape off, just make sure it's been pressed down, either use a fingernail or if you've got false nails or you've freshly done your nail polish, you can also use the blade of a knife just to flick the edge of that tape off. But do be careful that you don't get yourself with the knife, of course. sometimes when you're nervous the tape doesn't want to pull up which whatever tool you use of course get back to the fingernail there we go got that bit now by the time you've taken your tape off you may have forgotten where you're going to lay it onto the background card so I'm just going to lay it onto my background and just double check what borders I had allowed for. Then I can lay my card down on my backing card. I'm just looking that I've got even borders both sides there. And I'll trim that top bit off in a moment. Okay, so we've mounted up a card. So we could do that with any of our pieces that we've created today and then either put a stamped or a die cut sentiment over the top of it and you've made yourself a gorgeous card. 
So thank you for watching today. And if you have any questions, you can always pop them in the comments after the watch after that are on the page after watching the video. Also, check on the uh, scroll down from the video, and you'll see a list of what materials we've used and links to our website and our Facebook page. And also, there'll be our subscribe button. I hope to see you next time for crafting with Kathy with eclectic images. Okay.